What's up guys, Econ John here. In this video, we're gonna talk about Walrus's law, the intuition behind it, and then prove it mathematically. Let's go. So let's talk about the motivation for Walrus's law. We know that markets are constantly in flux and prices constantly change. The question is, will there exist a price vector where all markets for different goods clear? Being that one of the principal focuses of economics is understanding the determination of price, if equilibrium does not occur, then we have a serious problem in our understanding of economics. Therefore, we must be specific in our definition of equilibrium, aggregate supply, and demand. Measures of supply is pretty easy and we can observe it directly. However, estimation of demand is a little bit more difficult, along with the idea that markets clear. The use of Walrus's law helps bring this idea to light and puts this picture together. So, what is Walrus's law? Walrus's law states that for any price vector P, we have P times Z of P is identical to zero. That is the value of excess demand is identically zero, where the demand Z of P is a, defined as the summation of all Marshallian demands for good I minus the endowments of good I where I goes from one to N. To understand why this is the case, it is best to understand the definition of Walrasian equilibrium being defined as the summation of all Marshallian demands for good I is less than or equal to the initial endowments of good I. Note that our budget set over here is equal to the prices of good I times good X for all good I which is also equal to the prices of good I times endowment of good I. So this is, this is just a reshuffling of our budget set, so to say. So they're the same quantities. Walrus's law makes the obvious statement. If each individual satisfies his budget constraint, the value of his excess demand is zero. Thus, the sum of the excess demands are zero. I.e., if each consumer is utility maximizing, thus spending all his income, his excess demand should be zero. To prove Walrus's law, we write that into the definition of aggregate demand and multiply it by P. So we have P times Z, which is equal to P times or the summation of all our Marshallian demands minus the summation of all of our endowments, which is equal to the summation of the expenditure on our Marshallian demands minus the ex expenditure on the endowments over here. So we have them both next to each other. And this is equal to zero. This is because of the quality stated previously as the summation of all of our expenditure on all our Marshallian demands is equal to the expenditure on all our endowments. So the proof is complete. Combining Walrus's law with the definition of Walrasian equilibrium, we have two useful propositions. The first one is the market clearing proposition. This being if demand equals supply in the K minus one markets and the prices in the Kth market is greater than zero, then demand must equal supply in the kth market. What's the proof for this? If not, Walrus's law is violated. That's it. The second proposition is the possible existence of free goods. If P star is a Walrasian equilibrium, right? This being that our excess demand function is less than zero and prices in market J is equal to zero. That is some good is in excess supply at Walrasian equilibrium. It must be a free good. What's the proof for this? Since P star is a Walrasian equilibrium and Z of P, right, which is our excess demand function, is less than or equal to zero and prices can't be negative, if Z of P is less than zero and P of J is greater than zero, we run into a problem where we end up with our excess demand expenditure or our excess demand that's out there is less than zero. So that, that, that's problematic. This contradicts Walrus's law. So that's an explanation of the intuition of Walrus's law. And I proved it mathematically and showed you some of the interesting results behind it. So I hope this video helps. Let me know what's up.